Good afternoon, good evening, based on wherever you are on this gorgeous and mysterious planet. I'm Christine Tumaford of Smart Tribes Institute, and I'm really glad you guys are here today. We're going to have a bunch of fun. Um, Cami Spence is going to be here as well from our awesome team, and she will be fielding questions. So uh, you're going to use the chat box if you have questions as we go through this material. Let's go ahead and start off by saying thanks to quantum physics, we now know that everything is connected. What we also know is that everything is energy, which is what we are really going to focus on today. So on our June webinar, we talked about understanding what it is that you actually want. And we did an exercise called the outcome frame that would help you get clarity on that. I'm going to touch on that in just a sec. But what I want to think about now is once we know what we want, how do we actually get it? How do we actually understand enough about energy to do manifestation? So let's go ahead and get present, turn your various sounds off, um, email, phone, etc. So you can really be here. So you guys probably already know who I am. I'm a neuroscience-based growth coach, and we work on leadership. We work on culture. I've been a serial entrepreneur. And what we're really looking at today is when we do our business coaching, when we do our business building with our clients, when we work on sales and marketing and leadership and culture, we use neuroscience primarily and neurolinguistics. What we're going to work on today, though, is what we call beyond the brain. This is the stuff, this is the quantum physics, the quantum field work that's way beyond our kind of limited mental capacity because actually the more you learn this stuff, the more you realize that, wow, there's so much more to us than we actually understood. As I've said in the past, bees see dozens more colors than humans see and elephants hear tons of more sounds dogs too, than humans can hear. It doesn't mean those colors and those sounds aren't there. It just means we haven't tuned to that frequency. So today we're going to talk about tuning to some new frequencies, right? We work with a bunch of companies, all different shapes and sizes, all stages, all industries. So today we're going to learn the how of rapid manifestation, how to kind of release the energy that's getting in your way, but also how to direct the energy of manifestation. We're going to talk about the details of our upcoming Beyond the Brain retreat, which is November 2nd through 5th, and that's in the San Francisco Bay Area. Starts the evening of the 2nd with dinner and then ends after lunch on Sunday the 5th. We're going to talk about how to get some one-on-one -on -one time with me at that retreat. All right, let's go ahead and get into the meat and potatoes, if you will. Okay. In June. We talked about the outcome frame. Let's just look at this for a sec. If you haven't done an outcome frame, that's okay. You can do one after the webinar today. But we asked some key questions. What would you like? What will having that do for you? How will you feel? How will you know when you have it? What a value might you risk or lose? What might you have to let go of to get it? And then what are your next steps? Today, where we're going to go is into the world of feeling. Wings for a bird are like emotions for humans. Wings help us get where we want to go. So think about this for just a sec. Life is an emotional experience. Human beings are emotional creatures. Work is an emotional experience. We navigate with our emotions. Emotions are the wings that get us from A to B. Without them, we can't fly. The greatest insights, the greatest loves, the greatest triumphs, the greatest victories, the greatest defeats have all come through emotion. Emotions are a large part of how we experience the world. Many of you have heard me say that 90% of our experiences are driven, are dominated by our emotional brain, 90%. So I want us to get really present to the world of emotions. Please look at the emotion wheel and start to check in with how you're feeling right now. Check in with how you're feeling. 
notice however you're feeling and the energy of that emotion. This is essential since it takes energy to manifest. And if we are in a low energy emotional state, it makes manifesting, frankly, quite difficult. How many of you have noticed that when you've been trying to create something and you're stressed and you're struggling or you're defeated, it's really hard to move stuff forward? Emotions have energy. So now that you know kind of where you are right now, check this out. So Dr. David Hawkins, the late, great Dr. David Hawkins, MD and a PhD, did some really fascinating research on the magnetic field of the human body and how it changed based on the emotion the person was feeling. See the green bar here? Courage, that green bar. We want to always have, and I know always is a big word, we want to do our best to keep our emotional level at 200, our log level at 200 or greater. So you can see the emotion, the consciousness level, the human experience, et cetera. This is from David Hawkins' work. When we are below 200, what David Hawkins proved with a number of scientists and MDs, he proved that cells actually die off in the human body when the log level, the level of the magnetic field is really, really low. So look at this chart for a second, look at this table, and start to check in. Notice, recall a memory when you felt courageous and feel kind of how big that feels in your body. Um, notice when you felt fear and how contracting that feels in your body. And then notice a time recently maybe where you felt tremendous love. And people who are highly sensitive might actually feel the difference in our hands, right? Our hands have so many energy centers. You've all had the experience, I bet, where somebody was really mad at you and you could feel it. Yeah, you weren't making that up. You actually were feeling it. So what we do at the Beyond the Brain retreat, retreat is we actually experiment with sending and receiving energy, and then we start to direct it through um, in a, uh, I guess the best way to describe it is a map called a mesa. If you're familiar with Native American, you would understand the medicine wheel. It's kind of the Peruvian shamanism version of the medicine wheel, and we direct energy through the mesa to manifest. We always, of course, when we want to create something, we always say for the highest good of all, right? We don't want to just fulfill our selfish intentions. We want to make sure that it's an honorable request. So take a sec and think about this. There's something that you would like. Think about something that you would like, something that you would like to manifest or create. And in your mind, see north, south, east, and west. In the north, the sky, if you will, unlimited possibilities, that's where we have the inspiration. So we get this idea. So I just finished my third book. So I got this idea for the book, right? Then we move it down to the east. This is where the sun is. This is where our clear seeing is this is where our intellect resides so we take it from the north if you will and we'll do this in depth at beyond the brain retreat you'll really get it but let me just do the executive summary we start up in the sky with the inspiration we move it down to the sun we add intellect intellectual power to it if you will light brightness fire then we move it across and we add emotion um, water the west uh, the moon, feeling. The more emotional you feel positively, excuse me, 200 or higher, the more positive emotion you feel behind something you want to create, the faster the manifestation. One more time. The more positive emotion you feel around something you want to create, the faster the manifestation. Super cool. You're going to start to notice this. Then we take it from the west with all that emotion, and we bring it down to the south the earth. 
physicality, the place where things actually come together. So our insights start in the north, if you will. We can direct them to adding more clarity, more specificity, more intellect, more detail in the east. We shift it over to the west. This is ancient wisdom. Your ancestors used this stuff a long time ago. May as well bring this stuff back now. We add a bunch of emotion in the West and good, good, positive, beautiful feelings. And then we move it down to the South. And that's where the physical manifestation occurs. My experience is we have to love something deeply to create it. We have to love something deeply to create it. If you can't love it, are you sure you want to create it? So please start to look at the emotional component. Now, when we manifest things, you, some of you who may, may have been on our uh, prior June uh, webinar have seen this. This is how much faster, going from the, the purpley blue all the way down to the green, this is how much faster we can manifest when we use this technique. It's called arcs of manifestation. That's what's called in Peruvian shamanism. The medicine wheel and Native American use different techniques. But it's a similar idea, moving it through the different directions and the elements to manifest. Now, in case your intellect is going, whoa, this is really out there, <laughs> that's OK. It depends how much exposure you've had to quantum mechanics and quantum physics. Everything is energy. Everything is connected. This is what we often do. Not all of our clients use these techniques. Some do. Some aren't quite ready for them because they're a little too far out. But of course, our California clients are like, woo, bring me the weird stuff. So check in and see how this feels to you. Regardless, please experiment. I urge you to just experiment in your personal life because this stuff is really amazing. And remember, whenever you receive something, lots of gratitude and thank you. Lots of gratitude and thank you. All right. When we're at the Beyond the Brain retreat, we do what's called, anybody, has anybody read Carlos Castaneda back in the day? I grew up on Carlos Castaneda. Carlos Castaneda talked about our assemblage point, where our identity is assembled down in our solar plexus. When you come to the Beyond the Brain retreat, we actually shift your assemblage point and we expand your identity. We do this with quantum mechanics and quantum physics and actually entering into the quantum field, which any of us can live in as much as we want. And that is the field of possibility. So at the retreat, I am just a facilitator. I am facilitating your growth. So one of our CEOs of an automotive group and a member of YPO really tapped into, and for the first time ever, understood her soul's mission. And she has brought that back to her company and the amount of growth that they have experienced since Beyond the Brain has actually been phenomenal, almost a little bit too fast. So as we learn the arcs of manifestation, we also have to learn the speed at which we want to manifest, because sometimes we manifest a little too fast, and then it's like, whoa, here comes everything. So when we're together working on these tools, when we're walking the labyrinth, as you can see here on the screen, when we're doing a despacho, which is the lower left, it's an ancient, beautiful um, ritual offering to the natural world when we're burning the despacho, when we're going through this experience, we're actually expanding our ability to see. And I don't mean see with our eyeballs. I mean see the, the future, see the truth, see the situation, and also create what we want. Also, we are, of course, expanding our hearts because that's the great news. We have to love stuff to create it. I mean, I love that. Let's take a sec and take some questions and see how you guys are doing with all this stuff. Tammy, take it away. Hi, yeah, um, we have a question from George, and he says, I find, that when I, interact, when I, I find that when I interact with someone that is upset, their energy really affects me, and I feel it in my body. Ideas as to how to handle this? Yeah, so uh, George, energy is palpable. Okay, it does affect the magnetic field of our body, which Dr. David Hawkins proved repeatedly. Um, the best way to handle energy is two ways. For starters, when you feel somebody sending energy your way, we just need to let it move past. We don't need to hang on to it. 
when we make stories about it, we hang on to it. Stories are things like, um, this means that. He's looking at me with this gal. He must be angry with me. Oh, she is disappointed with me again. Watch out with the stories that we make. Let people have their emotions. Let them just have them and move past you. Do not cling to them. Because more often than not, when somebody sends negative energy your way or emotes and just affects the field around their body, and if you happen to be walking by or in it, they're going to feel it, often it's a projection. So, George, please write down, and everybody else, please write down these four great questions to, from Byron Katie to understand if it's actually a projection or if that feeling is yours. Because the vast majority of the time, it's not your feeling. It's a projection. Don't hang on to it. So the first question is, is it true? I'll give you an example in a sec. Is it true? Is it positively true? How does it make me feel? There we go again, right? See how important feelings are? Turn it around. Example. Here's the story. Bob is bullying me. Okay, that's a story, right? Is that true? Yes, I really feel this way. Is this positively true all the time? Well, no. <laughs> um, how does it make you feel? Lousy, beat up, abused, victimized. Turn it around. Is Bob bullying himself? Are you bullying yourself? Emotions are how we experience the world. I cannot stress how important it is to just let them move through. I worked with a man the other day who was very angry. And I was on webcam with him and just the amount of anger. He was just, he was angry at life. He wasn't angry at me. First, I just kind of got, wow, it must be really hard to be him. I wanted to hold space for his experience, but I didn't want to let it in my field. So I just kept kind of thinking of, you know, and I actually was moving my body around a lot just because it was so powerful. So George, ask those questions so that you don't cling to the emotion. Let that baby move through. Check that out. Thank you for your question. Um, yeah, and we have one more question from Leo J. He says, I'm fascinated by the directions in the Mesa you mentioned and how ancient wisdom can help us to bring our visions into reality. At the November retreat, will we learn more about the movement of energy and how to intentionally direct it around the Mesa to manifest? Okay, great. Um, Leo, thank you. Yes, so... We do a tremendous amount of work with energy at the retreat, and here's sort of the executive summary. So Thursday night, everybody shows up. We have an awesome, organic, super yummy um, dinner. Um, then we come together. We set the container. Everybody sets their intentions so we can hold that. We clear everybody's energy so that they don't have to carry all the stuff that they've showed up with into the uh, weekend. Um, Friday, awesome, organic breakfast. Um, learning about palpability of energy, moving energy back and forth. We actually move some physical objects with our, with our um, energy field because then people actually get that energy, you know, um, moves stuff, if you will. Um, awesome organic lunch, um, do a bunch of other exercises, awesome organic dinner, um, and then we have a sound journey with the amazing Patricia Everett, who is like my favorite sound journey lady. We'll show you a pic in a couple of minutes. And um, sound is a beautiful way to expand one's awareness, so not to be missed. Um, Saturday, again, three great meals. Uh, Saturday, we're working on relationships, relationships with the natural world, with the different directions, with the sun, the moon, the trees, uh, the plants, the rocks, et cetera. Um, the ancient wise ones of the natural world, if you will, the elders. And then um, we do that despacho ceremony on Saturday night where we make that cool offering for all the stuff that we have been gifted. And we do a cool burning of that. And then on Sunday, we do an integration. It takes about half the day to integrate and to really fully get into your fibers and lock in all the stuff that we um, learned. So you'll leave with the exact tools. We will give you all the physical objects that you need to set up your own mesa to do the arcs of manifestation and all the other techniques that we teach you. So you'll leave with like a little kit that you'll be working with the whole weekend, so it'll be ready. And then a few weeks later, 
um, I'll have a 90-minute private session with you um, to refine any techniques, et cetera, and uh, we'll go from there. Hope that that covers it, Leo. Let's um, jump on back if it's okay. Okay, uh, to come on back, Tammy, is that all right? Yep. Okay. Yep, we're good for now. Okay, thank you. So when we learn these tools of awareness, when we learn to interact with and embrace the elements, when we learn the medicines, which really means energies, right, of healing, to be more connected to self, to help others when they're in stress, running through the office crazy, to kind of help ground them and heal whatever stress they're going through, it helps us become more present. It helps us become more connected to the quantum field. It helps us become more capable, really. So this is what it's about. Let's now talk. We must talk about emotional intelligence in order to manifest faster. So let's go there for a sec. Emotional intelligence has two flavors, if you will, <laughs> or two bands. Personal competence, your relationship with yourself social competence, your relationship with others. We want to increase our self-awareness, how in tune we are with our own emotions. We want to increase our self-management, our ability to regulate our emotional state. Separately, we want to increase our social awareness, how in tune are we with other people's emotions, and then our relationship management, how can we navigate those emotions and in our interactions with others? As we start to think about this, please kind of take this as homework, if you will. Start to check in. How self-aware are you? Can you say, wow, I'm really irritated? Um, what we want to be able to do, we don't want to deny our emotion because that just messes things up. We want to let them come and move through. So, for example, I was so proud of one of our clients recently. I was in a meeting with him. And um, some of his executives were there, and he heard, he heard some news he didn't like. And he said, wow, I'm, like, so frustrated by that. And I'm going to be fine in about five minutes. <laughs> so he got to state what he was really frustrated by, think, uh, something that was taking too long. And he got to share that and not smush it down and then get resentful and weird and, you know, have bad behaviors around that. He was able to just call it out and say, you know what? I'm letting go of that, and let's talk about how we're going to avoid creating this sort of situation in the future. So start to look at, so he did, did you see what he did? He did self-awareness, and then he did self-management. He used his prefrontal cortex to regulate his emotions. As we become more sensitive to energy, we can read people very easily because we can see or feel, depending on what your sensitivity is, their energy field. That's how we can help them when they get stuck. So please start to um, raise your awareness around your own first, and then start to notice others. We'll talk in the future uh, on November 2nd through 5th about shifting and switching, and the ability to kind of pop your energy over to check somebody else's energy out, so you can pop back and be of most service to them, right? So one of our clients uh, who went to the uh, the level one beyond the brain, which is what we're talking about today, um, is the uh, CFO of a huge uh, Silicon Valley venture capital firm. And he navigates tons of people, tons of stress, tons of scenarios, and he finds that being connected to nature, which is incredibly grounding during very challenging times, and also just gives you a lot of energy. People always say, why do you have so much energy? You know? <laughs> I don't sleep as much as I would like uh, just because there's so much cool stuff to do. But I draw a tremendous amount of energy through my relationships with the natural world. So start to think about how could I transform my leadership experience, my life experience, if I had more energy. So let's take uh, another question or two. And... Um, Below, you guys will see on the screen, is our URL, smarttribesinstitute.com slash STI retreat. Um, the first two people to register today will get half an hour with me, private time, alone time at the retreat, where we'll work on whatever you want to work on. 
Ask your questions, everybody in the chat box. Thanks. Hi, Tammy. Okay. Yeah. So we did. We had a question from uh, Lori B. And she says, would like to know if there's a ton of preparation required for the retreat. Okay, Lori. Um, here's what happens. So you go to the link that we're showing you on the page, uh, the slash STI retreat page. You go there. You put your deposit down to save your space. We then send you an application. It's like eight or so questions to make sure that what you want and what we deliver matches up. Um, that's the preparation stuff. We'll send you some very minor suggestions. We will for sure tell you what to pack because you want outdoors clothes and comfortable clothes and a water bottle and, and stuff like that in layers. Um, but really the questions are about, this is, there's nothing to do with religion here. This is about spirituality. This is about connection to yourself and connection to the earth. We've had all different religions present, so it's not about that. We want to understand how fit you are, you know, if you're comfortable sitting in a chair or sitting on the ground, you know, for periods of time. Um, and we just ask a couple of questions about what you'd like to get out of the retreat and what your spiritual foundation is. And um, that's all you do. You know, you fill that in and then we're, we're good to go. So, yeah, not a ton of preparation. It's really about figuring out your intention. And even if you don't know your intention, if your intention for starters is to give yourself the gift of not doing for a whole weekend, giving yourself the gift of coming into nature and seeing what opens up. We've had people show up not knowing what they wanted, just knowing that they needed to take a break. And they come and everything unfolds. So we don't need to put a bunch of like, pressure around what do I want to get here we really want to help you get a clear intention good um uh, Tammy can we scooch on or do we have anything else we have to cover right now um we just had another question come in from Betty um yeah. and she's asking does your vision come first before you can communicate about vision with or for the group oh Betty yeah um, okay, so when you notice north to east, the vision comes in, but the east is so important because that is where you start to articulate it. So thank you for this question. So often we'll get a vision that's a little bit amorphous, like for my book. Um, I was feeling this new book, and I was like, God, what's it about? You know. Then as I went to the east and started bringing my intellect into it, it started to unfold and become clear. Then I could articulate it. And as I articulated it, I could start to really love it and love the people that were going to read it and see people benefiting from it. So you get that vision, but it's so important to go to the East to get the, the details, if you will, and the ability to articulate and refine it. So zoom, north to East to West to South. Thank you. Cool. Okay, great. So just a couple more quick pictures. You'll see the lovely Patricia Eppert with all of her cool noisemakers. Um, everybody has a, um, I, think, I think everybody, unless you specify otherwise, has a private room. Um, you can see all the yummy organic food, beautiful sacred Indian grounds. Um, it's really about finding out who you are and what you want to create next, right? So regardless of how successful you are, we've had billionaires there, we've had people starting their first company ever. Um, it's a sacred container, it's a confidentiality zone, everybody is supporting everybody in this beautiful work. We buddy people up for cool different labs, so you do end up making some very cool friends and sharing a really unique experience. And if you want to live your life in a much bigger way, if you want to find out who you really are and what you're really capable of creating, this is an interesting place to do it. So that's a question between you and you. So if you have questions, um, any more questions, I know we need to end in a sec. If you have any more questions about the program, you can reach out to Alexis at smarttribesinstitute.com or you can call her directly 
at 415-969-7563. She'll answer your various questions in the investment, lodging and meals is all included, all materials is included, that's why it's easy. It's just one investment and it's the whole package. You just have to get yourself there and get yourself away. Um, great, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you for being curious about who you are and thank you for stretching to the next level of, frankly, service. Service to yourself, service to your tribe and service to humanity. All right, let's wrap it up. Everybody have a great day. Thank you.